Breaking news, Redskins quarterback Robert Griffin III recently called out the St. Louis Rams, claiming that his team should easily beat them due to their poor defense. Going into week 13 of the NFL season, we will see if RG3 can back up his claim. Hello everyone and welcome to part 17 of my Rams Connected franchise here on Clan 92 TV. And yes, you guys heard it right, RG3 recently called out the St. Louis Rams. But before we get into that game, I'm re-signing Jaquiz Rogers for a four-year deal for only $2 million per year. That signing is a very good decision by the Rams' office, especially when considering that Jaquiz Rodgers beat the single-game record for rushing yards and touchdowns last year. I'm showing you the Rams' injuries going into this game, and the two big injuries we have are Mike Williams and Jason Hatcher. Now we're going to go to the Redskins, and they're a pretty good team with not many injuries this year, so they are definitely going to have an advantage on us having all of their starters and all of their best players playing this game. And in case you guys don't know this, this is actually the last regular season episode in this series, which is kind of weird considering that there's only going to be five regular season episodes and there may be an equal amount of postseason episodes and obviously the reason why i'm simming so many games is so i can get into my nba 2k14 series and the votes are still pretty close for that in case you guys don't know as of now the two big teams that are really duking it out are the bucks and nuggets both with five votes but the magic are still in it they still have four votes so it's probably going to be one of those three teams it's just going to come down to whoever gets that last vote in and if it's still tied by the time i want to start my series I'll either do two things. I may just pick it myself or I may do something where I put one video just saying Hey, you need to vote for one of these three teams at that point That way all the people that voted for another team that weren't one of those three will get to pick from there So starting off this game the Rams have made a drive all the way downfield and they will end the drive with the fullback run into the end zone That will make the score 7-0 at the start of this game And now it is time for RG3 to take the field and try to back up the statements He made prior to this game on second and two. They're in the pistol formation They're giving it to Alfred Morse and he finds a hole all the way upfield and we get a lucky tackle right there that's a rush for 19 yards and the Redskins after that play realize that they can use Alfred Morris to their advantage they're running Morris to the left side he's got open field ahead of him and he spins away from one defender and he's running upfield and we can't even tackle him we have to push him out of bounds at the 13 yard line and he already has 60 yards rushing on the day now on second 12 RG3 is back he's going to the left side he finds Pierre Garçon and look at this play he spins in between the blocker and the defender and somehow gets into the end zone a crazy play by Pierre Garçon. A little bit of a glitch on that play, but RG3 is proving he can beat up our defense like he said he would. Now on first and 10, we're doing a four verticals play. I felt like risking it. Jaquay White is running out to the right, and he's bombing it downfield to Chris Givens, who's wide open. He tries getting away from the defender, but he will be hit down at the 30-yard line. That will set us up the following play on second and 10. Jaquay White is rolling out to the right side, and he's going to take it himself, and he's going to slide down just one yard away from the first down marker. We end up picking up that first down, and at the start of the second quarter, we're doing a play action pass. Jaquay White is rolling out to the right again he's gonna take it again this time getting eight yards and i really like running with him he is definitely one of my favorite players to play with on first and goal we're running jaquiz rogers up the middle and he somehow gets into the end zone it does not look like he got it in there but the officials called it that way that will make the score 14 to 7 and the redskins will get the ball right now at the 20 yard line with about nine minutes left in the second quarter they're running morse again to the right side and he crosses over to the middle just to get decked right there now on second and seven the redskins will be set up in the pistol formation this time they will not hand it off to and RG3 is throwing it across the middle to Fred Davis, someone that we do not see much of at all really anymore in the NFL. But now on third and two, the Redskins are going to try to convert. And look at that play by Truman Johnson. The referees do not know if he passed the first down marker. Mike Shanahan looks a little bit angry after that play, but they will bring out the tape measure, line it up, and there it is. Inches away, that will make it fourth and inches for the following play. And they are going to elect to kick a field goal in this situation. The kick is up, and it is wide left. The Rams will get the ball right now at the 46 yard yard line setting us up with good field position they will start off right here on second and five Jaquay White is in the shotgun he's back he's gonna roll out to the left side and find a wide open Michael Floyd he's gonna try to take it outside and go around the blocker but he ends up stepping out of bounds at the 18 yard line we don't get anything going for two plays so now on third and ten Jaquay White finds Jared Cook who runs over a defender picks up the first down and after two plays we lose five yards on the goal 
old line. We're going to do a play action pass. Jaquay White is rolling out to the right side. He's going to take it himself, but Tavon Austin gets in the way. It messes up Jaquay White's run, and he gets pushed out of bounds at the four-yard line. That will bring up fourth and goal and force us to kick a field goal. The kick is up and good. That will make the score 17-7, to and the Rams have opened up this game and taken a two-possession lead. Now RG3 is in the shotgun on second and 10 at the 20-yard line. He's giving the ball to Alfred Morris, who runs up five yards with the guy on his arm. That will make it third and two, but they will convert on that. Now on second and five, right after the two-minute warning, RG3 throws it, and it's picked off by Truman Johnson. He's going to take it to the right side. He's going to try to get past RG3, but he gets him down right there at the 23-yard line. A terrible play by the Redskins quarterback, but despite making that mistake, he was still able to chase down Truman Johnson and stop him before getting into the end zone. On first and goal, the Rams will have the ball at the six-yard line with a minute and 30 seconds left. Jaquay White is back. He's throwing it to the right side to Jared Cook, who tries diving into the end zone, but he will end up just one yard short. That will give us time to waste some clock and give it to Kendricks right up the middle into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. That will make the score 24-7, to and we are opening this game even more, and it's all thanks to Truman Johnson having two key plays in this game. First, stopping Alfred Morris from picking up a first down, forcing them to kick a long field goal, which they ended up missing, and then getting that interception later in the game. So the Redskins are trying to get something going at this point in the game. They're at the 12-yard line, and Alfred Morris gets hit down. It will be 4th and 22 after a sack and a tackle in the backfield on Alfred Morris. Tavon Austin is back, getting ready to retrieve this punt. He's going to take it right up the middle getting into their territory and he's going to take it outside he gets past the 35 yard line and gets to the 33 yard line we are in field goal territory and on third and nine Jaquay White is back he's throwing out to the right side he's throwing it deep to Michael Floyd a risky throw right there by Jaquay White that could have easily been intercepted on second and goal I noticed that they're not covering Austin Pettis he's open in the corner of the end zone and that will be a touchdown for the Rams I think it's been three straight touchdowns in the last like five minutes of this game just a dominating performance by the Rams to close out the first half. That will make the score 7-31 to going into the second half of this game. Now starting off the third quarter, RG3 is getting a nice pass to Josh Cribbs. That's right, Josh Cribbs is on the Redskins. He decided to sign with them in the offseason. Now RG3 is back on first and 10. He's finding Fred Davis on the right side, who picks up about 8 yards right there. That will set them up at the 48-yard line with about 8.5 minutes left. They're giving the ball to Morris right up the middle, who cuts outside, gets past one defender, and is hit down at about the 40-yard line. A great run by Alfred Morris, and he is just dominating our defense today. So they're going to keep giving it to him after that play. He's going to run up the middle, do an unnecessary spin move, and pick up the first down. He's got 120 yards rushing on the day. So on second and five, they're going to try to do a screen pass, but we cover Alfred Morris perfectly, resulting in a sack. So on fourth and four, they're going to have to kick a field goal. The kick is up and good. That will make the score 10-31, to 31, and the Rams are still holding a three-touchdown lead after that dominating performance in the second quarter. On first and ten, Jaquay White is rolling out to the right side. He's just going to dump the ball off to Chris Gibbons for about a five-yard gain. That will set us up second and five at the 45 yard line but after a hit for a loss it will be third and seven at the 47 yard line Jaquay White is throwing it across the bell to again Chris Gibbons and this is when Chris Gibbons started taking over the game I knew I could start relying on him here on third and five I'm going to try to do that deep bomb again but Jaquay White gets sacked in the backfield at the 44 yard line that will set the Redskins up on second and six RG3 is in the pistol he snaps the ball and he doesn't even get the chance to hand off the ball he gets hit down by James Laurinaitis a great play by the Rams defense there on third and 11 RG3 is back he's throwing it to the right side to Fred Davis who gets by one guy tries cutting out to the left side but he does not pick up the first down marker by doing that and now at this point in the game both teams got in this mode where neither of us could score they would have to punt us the ball and we would just punt it right back to them so at the 48 yard line we had to punt the Redskins the ball they will start their drive at the 20 yard line it is second and 10 Robert Griffin the third is back he's throwing it to the left side to Fred Davis again who gets hit hard right there by James Laurinaitis the ball pops out but the Redskins will pick it up so they will maintain possession of the ball on third and nine it will be at the 34 yard line Griffin's thrown it to the left side to Fred Davis again who cannot pick up the first down the Redskins will opt to go for it here on fourth and three RG3 is back he's rolling out to the right side and he's going to take it himself I missed the tackle James Laurinaitis and he gets to the 49 yard line that will be a pickup of six yards on the 49 yard line it is first and 10 RG3 is back and he gets sacked right there by Cujo the rookie defensive tackle on fourth and nine the Redskins will go for it again at the 50 yard line RG3 is back he's getting hit as he throws it's going downfield and it is batted down by cornerback MD Jennings. That will set us up at the 50 yard line on first and 10. We're going to hand the ball off to Jaquiz Rogers. He's taking it outside before being hit down just one yard away from the first down marker. Now on second and one, we're going to be running Jaquiz Rogers again. We're just trying to waste clock at this time. Actually, we end up doing the play action. We're throwing it downfield to Tavon Austin and a very well thrown ball there by Jaquay White. And surprisingly enough, that was Tavon Austin's first reception of the game. Now Jaquiz Rogers is running outside again. He gets within the 10 yard line. That will set us up first and goal at the six yard line. On third and goal, we are 
at the five yard line. White is in the shotgun. He's thrown it to the left side and it is just batted down by the defender. A terrible route ran by the wide receiver there. On the five yard line, we will just kick the field goal. It is up and good. That will make the score 34 to 10. And the Rams have just opened up this game. We have taken the lead and all we have to do right now is secure the lead and we can easily walk away from here with the win. RG3 is back and he's going to run with it himself. I forgot to have a linebacker stay back with a QB spy and he gets all the way to the 45 yard line. A rush of 25 yards there. Now RG3 is in the pistol formation. He's going to be throwing it here he's looking at the right side to an open Alfred Morris and it looks like he's gonna get tackled but he stiff arms away from the defender he goes upfield all the way to the 27 yard line now on first and 10 they have it at the 27 yard line close to the two minute warning RG3 is back he's looking to the right side and it's intercepted by McGee he's got an open field ahead of him he's gonna run the only guy there is Pierre Garcon let's see if he can chase him down he's gonna dive and miss McGee's got an open field the 10 the 5 touchdown Rams there is RG3's comments coming right back at him Claiming that the Rams defense is one of the worst in the league. And there he's getting picked off and brought back all the way for a touchdown. Jeff Fisher's pumped after that play. And the Rams defense just embarrassed RG3 both on and off the field with just that play alone. That will increase the Rams lead making the score 41-10 to with 2 minutes and 15 seconds left. This game is just about over. RG3 is going to try to stay with it. He's going to run with the ball and he gets hit out of bounds at the 45 yard line. He's got 54 rushing yards on the day. So although his passing hasn't been that great. He has beat us with the run. Now he's giving the ball to Alfred Morris who gets just one yard away from the first down marker. Now will make it third and one after the two minute warning. RG3 is back. He's trying to throw it to his wide receiver who just completely drops the ball there. And here again, just like last game, although they're down and although it's under two minutes, they're going to elect to punt us the ball for some reason. I make sure Tavon Austin does not pick up the ball. So it is a touchback. Now we're just going to try to waste some clock. We're giving the ball to Jaquiz Rogers up the middle who sees an opening on the left side. He's got open field ahead of him. It's a foot race to the end zone at this point, but he gets chased down by the Redskins defender and is hit down at the 34-yard line. On second and six, we've got Darren Sproles out there. He's going to kick it out to the left side, and he's got open field ahead of him. Again, he gets to the five-yard line and is hit down just inches away from the end zone marker. So on first and goal, we're at the one-yard line, and I thought I'd do something fun. We're doing a fake field goal pass. Case Keenum getting some playing time. He's rolling out to the right and finds Darren Sproles across the field, throwing over his shoulder, just adding to the blowout in this game, and Darren Sproles is happy that he's finally getting some playing time. That will make the score 10 to 47, but we still need to kick the extra point. And I thought, hey, if we're going to do a fake field goal pass there, we might as well do it again. So with four seconds left, Case Keenum's doing another fake field goal pass, and this time to Darren Sproles again. If you look at the replay here, he doesn't even expect the ball to come to him. He slows down and then goes for it. So that will end the game. The score will be 10 to 49. A great game by the Rams team, both offensively and defensively, especially after RG3 statements before the game. We were able to show him up and actually get a pick six on him in this game which was definitely the highlight in my opinion Jeff Fisher and Mike Shanahan shaking hands at the end of this game and here is your GMC never seen never moment of the game you would think it would be the pick six but instead it's just a one yard run by Jaquiz Rogers and lastly here are your final game stats we did better in score passing yards takeaways and time of possession after that game our record is nine and four and we play the eight and five Steelers the following week I will elect to simulate these last couple games so after the simulation there we go from nine and four and we go up to ten and for on the season. So the following week we will be playing the 7-7 seven seven Philadelphia Eagles who have had a pretty up and down season up until this point. We're going to end up simming that game since there's only two games left in the regular season and we end up winning that game as well. So in week 17 of the NFL season we will be playing the 6-9 and nines Arizona Cardinals. So I am going to simulate this week as well. That way we can get into the postseason in the next episode. We easily win that game and we end the season with a record of 12-4 and four, giving us, I think, I'm not sure if it's a 1 or a two seed, but we do get a bye in the first round of the playoffs. So that will conclude this episode of the Rams Connected franchise. Be sure to go check out the previous video in this series where we play the Cincinnati Bengals. It's a pretty good game as well. And also be sure to go vote for my NBA 2K14 My GM team. I'll put a link in the description for the video where you can leave a comment and vote for the team you want. And I hope you guys have a great day. God bless you guys.